So I'm going to be talking about how to use uh, R and R Studio software to do some of the same data and data analysis that we were doing in our class for uh, Economics 343, but we're using Excel. So in lab and in class, we require Excel, but for this lab, I want to show some people who are interested how to use R and R Studio. So it's completely optional. Don't have to do it if you want to learn. Uh, my approach to learning is just doing, having something to work with, and then working with it, and then knowing that, that solving the problem is kind of its own incentive. If you run into a wall, you know that you have a project to do, so you'll figure it out and spend the time. It's not as easy to learn it from a book where you're learning line by line. You'll, you won't remember as much. It's applying it and using it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the data, two variables, the same assignment from lab, and we're going to uh, do, this, do the lab work with R and R Studio. So here's what I have. This is a CSV file. It's comma separated values. It's in text, but it's read in Excel as cells, and the commas are what make the cell divisions. It's, it's monthly frequency from 1980 all the way down to 2017. It's got some weird blanks in it somehow that we'll kind of get rid of. Um, it's got two variables. It's got CPI, or the Consumer Price Index, and it's got the World, the, uh, world Oil Price, or the West Texas Intermediate Oil Price. So two variables, the CSV. I'm going to close it up. See, it's in my F drive here. You're going to have to name it as your own. And this is the code. This is the script in R, which is also included. So notice, uh, if you're not familiar with R Studio, it's got the four parts. Uh, this would be the variables. We don't have any yet. This is going to be our plots, and we'll do one later. This is the some of the output, and then this is the code. So uh, this is what we're going to be working in. And this is pre-written, and I suggest that you kind of play around with it. Uh, take more liberties. You can uh, delete code, see what happens, change things. Um, Everything's here for a reason, but I got to warn you: some things are here inefficiently. I, there's things I could do better, but I'm doing this for people who are just starting out, and for students who know a little bit or have books they're working through. Um, I make mistakes, and I also repeat some things and print some things over and over because I'm really advising you always look at your data as you go. You don't want uh, to make a mistake and not say it's there. You want to look at your data, make sure they line up, make sure your blanks are where they're supposed to be, or nothing's missing. And so I do print the dimensions in the head quite a bit because we're going to look at it as we go. So I've got it line by line. I've got about 40 lines of text, and um, I'll show you how it works. I'm going to run, which will run this highlighted part, and then it, once you're done, you can actually do source, which will run the whole thing, um, but a lot of it is invisible. So if you want certain output to show, you might have to have special code printing it. So there's a little bit difference between running all of it highlighted and, and doing it as source. So I'm going to run here. First of all, I'm going to set the working directory to F, which is where mine is. If You, you should where, you know, look where your file is. Uh, you might want to put in your root file on your flash drive to make it easy, or you can type in your subfolders, whatever you do. Um, run it, set the working directory, and now I'm going to read this. Now I'm going to make a little object called data, and what, what goes in it, the arrow, is reading the CSV file. Here's the name of the CSV file in quotes. Remember, R separates everything with commas, too, so it separates the command, and then header is true, meaning that there's variable names. I'm going to run it, and now I have data. It says 774 observations of three variables. So one of those is the date, which we're not going to use, and it doesn't read that date format without help. Um, it's going to read its own date format as a time series. Three variables, that's the three variables. The other ones are CPI and the West Texas Intermediate Oil Price. Um, if you think it's 1980 to, you know, it's less than 40 years, it should be 450 months or so, but why are there 774? There's going to be a lot of NAs at the end, um, so we're going to wind up getting rid of the, the not available or the NAs as we go. All right, um, so we can do the head, which shows you the top five observations. And you can see here, this is what we had in Excel. And the dates kind of came in weird. Remember, these were parentheses, and now they are uh, dots. So we're going to change the variable names. And the 774. Now, this is not in the code, but I'm going to do the opposite of head, which is tail. And there's your problem. It is not available. So these are, were brought in somehow. So rather than going in and fixing the Excel, one of the reasons we use R is to fix problems more easily. So. I'm going to do this command, na omit, which omits all na variables. And also, I'm going to get rid of the first uh, column. So na omit, and then parentheses, is what I am omitting, the data. And notice I'm just going to rename data. In other words, I'm getting rid of it. It's deleting those observations. If I need them back, I have to go back through the code. Notice this. This is a hard bracket. Nothing, comma, something. Now remember, it's a matrix, row, column. So this is all rows, comma, columns 2 and 3, which are 2 and 3. It's going to just get rid of, it's going to leave only those second and third columns, which are the variables I want. I'm going to run. And now I've got only 450 observations. I got rid of those. Now, this command makes the column names of my data set, 
And remember what R does. Everything's in the groups and objects. So this is a group of two things. CPI. It's in quotes. And that's to give it the name. And then also in quotes. So again, you can go back and look at whatever book or tutorial you're using and kind of remember what the C is for in the quotes. I'm going to run it. And then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to run my head and my dimension. And now I've got CPI, price, and I've got no dates because, again, we're going to name it differently. We're going to assign them differently. And now we're going to go to here. Now, this is kind of a cheat, okay, because I don't want to use Deepler or anything like that right now. But this dollar sign is make a column. So I'm actually make a third column here, which doesn't exist. And if you notice, it's 100 times 2 minus 1. This is going to be the real price of WTI, real oil price. All right, and so I'm going to make a third one. All right, now if I go to the head, I'm going to have this. So this is the real oil price. Okay, this is just data. And the one reason I did it here is because this dollar sign doesn't work for time series, um, and this is not a time series yet, and I wanted to make the variable as we go. So, what else? We are going to uh, make a time series. So I'm going, now notice this, if I click on this, nothing happens. It doesn't read it as code. I'm going to rename data as TS, which makes it time series. And remember, you have to have what you're making a time series, tell it what dates it is, and make sure it knows it's monthly. Because if I had all these observations and it thought it was yearly, it would go 450 years into the future. So, so it tells it it's 12 months, it's going to end in 2017. So uh, data, right, is my data set. It's going to write over the data. It's going to re-put it in the same object. Start, it's going to be the first period of 1980. And remember, these are grouped. If you fail to group things, it won't read it. So make sure you put it in as a group. And then the frequency is 12 for 12 months. All right. And now I run that. Now it is a time series. If I look at the dimensions, should be the same. And but it looks a little bit different with the head. And this is what we're going to do. I'm going to plot my new variable. All right. Now notice this is ugly. It's got some extra things. Um, but this is a time series plot. So that's all you have to do. All right, one command, but we're going to get more complicated. I'm going to make the inflation rate. So inflation rate is 100 times. It's going to be the new value over the old value. All right, and remember, it's, you can you can divide over one or divide over the previous value, or you could just take the ratio first and then minus one. So this is the easier way to do it. This is the data at, at any given time, and then the lag is some period ago. So it's the lag past value of itself. And then it's 12 periods past. And in R, make sure past is negative. So it's negative 12 here. And so what I'm doing is the formula saying take the value over the past value from 12 periods ago. And then you divide, you um, subtract, and then multiply by 100. All right, so now I have inf for inflation. And I can plot it. You can see here that it starts in 1981, because remember, you, you lose the first observations. And then it, this is the inflation. You can see a drop negative around the crisis. It looks about right, and it should end in 2017. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make percentage change all right, of nominal oil prices and real. The R stands for real. And this is the same formula, but it's the other variables. Now, I, I have to mention, what does this mean? Com nothing comma one. This says take data, but take part of data. It's the part of data, right? Not the full data set. It says let's take part of it. One, this is row, comma, columns. There's nothing listed, so it's all rows, comma, column one. Column one was CPI, right? That's inflation, right? Uh, it's the percentage change in CPI. Now we're going to do percentage change in the nominal oil price, percentage change in the real oil price. And so it's column two, column three, but the formula is exactly the same. And if you had column four, you would just copy it and change the three to threes to fours and you're good. All right. So we're going to make sure we have these, right? We select it. And we, so we'll look at over here's new name. What are we going to assign to it? A hundred times formula with the lag 12 periods ago. All right. So we got that. And then we have inflation, PCH, and PCH for or for two PCHs. Right? Now, we're going to put it back on our data. So we're going to column bind C bin certain things. Data, which is our original set, and we're going to tack on these three variables to it. It's going to squish three things together. And so now instead of three variables, it's going to be six. All right, so now I've got my full data set. And what I'm doing here, this is just a check. Okay, we are going to do a check to make sure we have what we need. So notice that we, we look up here, there's head, right? Um, this one, and it's MAs at the top. 
And the reason why is because remember, Janu there's no pr inflation for January of the first year because you can't subtract from 12 periods ago. The first variable appears January of the second year. Okay, so these are NAs because they're not available, they do not exist. One problem with R to watch out for is what if it's going to have 12 fewer observations. What if it puts them first and has the last 12 blank? Like you have to make sure you line them up so 1980 is 1980 and 2016 is 2016. It's possible that it gets cut and then they, they don't line up quite properly. Okay. So that looks good. And the dimensions, six variables, 450 months. And now we're going to do the correlation. So the COR and the correlation of what? Data. All right. And this, and notice, look, there's, it can't calculate those because it's got NAs in there. You say like, okay, let's omit the NAs. Also, we're, we don't care about these first variables. We only care about the, those percentage changes that we made. So this is what I wrote, core of what? It's like, remember, it's stacking. You start in the middle and go out. We want the correlation of the three columns from data, those in parentheses. We omit the NAs to make sure that they can compute them. And of the of that three columns and only the ones with values, we take the correlation. So always look at the inside and kind of work out. The other thing is make sure you have enough parentheses. It's very easy to have one too many or one too few. Nice thing about our studio is if you have a problem, I'm going to delete that. It should tell me there's a problem. All right. If I put too many, it might also tell me there's a problem. So our studio is kind of built to help you with that. But I've got this. Now, there's a couple things here. You can There's some commands that I'm not doing. You can make a triangular where it leaves out the common ones. Notice that 3, 1, and 1, 3 are the same. But you can see this is the correlation table. And we're going to simplify it. We're going to round it a little bit later. All right. So now, I've got these are my names. And notice that co uh, column binding these makes this data uh, ap you know, appear in the title. So I just wrote this to, to change it. You can do that too. But now if you look at the head, it's a little bit cleaner. All right. And so I've got the names and the percentage changes and the inflation rate. Remember what I said in class, uh, eight characters is my limit because the old 8-bit and uh, limits on characters. But, you can, you know, it's also simpler to read. You might have columns that are narrow that you're trying to squish onto a page, so short names are better. All right. Now, when, you, when we source it, we're going to have, it's not going to show up unless you print it. Print says to actually print a screen rather than run it invisibly. So start in the middle. I've got my data subset, right, columns for and remember what the colon means. It means everything from 4 to 6, so it's 4 through 6. Leave out the NAs, correlation of that, and then round it, comma, to three decimals. All right? And then print means make sure it shows up. All right, and now look, I've got a 3. All right, so that's my simpler one. All right, now we're going to do some other things. We're going to make the average of the mean. All right? And then now here, I'm going to make the mean of every column. And for that, I use the apply function. So I've got, the, remember, this is our thing we've been doing with, but apply means do it for everything. But remember what, and this is really important, remember what computers do. They're like robots, right? They don't think for you, and they do something really well over and over and over. So if you tell it, like, here's what to do over and over and over without a mistake, without having to fill in any gaps, it will do it perfectly, but it will not read your mind. So you have to say, like, do something over and over. Well, what? Well, take this data set. We put it here. And you say, well, I want the means, but you can go rows or columns. And remember, you know, it's, it's row, column, right? Two. Row is one, column is two. So this says take this data set for every column, do a function. What function? Mean. Right? So that's that's what this sentence means, or this, this thing means. And so it is there, but it is not. It doesn't show. Remember, R doesn't show it unless you call it. So it's going to show up down here. SDs is standard deviations. Do the same thing over and over. Take the same data. Right? Apply for all columns for this data the standard deviation function. And you run it, and again, it doesn't show up. Once you go to print, right? and, and when you're just running it in here, it'll show up if you just type the name. But here we go. And here, all the column means all the column standard deviations. All right? So, so remember what that means. So look at look how many parentheses we have, right? We're printing something. What are we printing? The rounded means. And on the rounding, this means to three decimal places. So start in the middle. You say, I've got means, all right? And I want them rounded to three places. And I want to print that. So you think of it like it's stacked, all right? So now we've got the answers to that. Now, for the rest, I want to make a, a scatter plot, which is a little bit extra. All right, and so I made a second data set that is not time series because some stuff you can't do with time series. And so if this is as a data frame, I'm going to turn it back, take the data, 4 through 6, remember those are those inflation and, and growth rates. I run that, I make data 2. 
Okay, now I'm going to plot that. And if you just put it in as a plot, this is the scatter plot of nominal oil prices and inflation. And if, is there a relationship? Is there not? Well, I don't know. But that's the idea is that you can actually make it. Now, there's more you can do it that I'm not doing. I like to make these little dots, right? You can change this. You can change the labels, which I'll do below. You can change the size of, of I make these solid little black dots. You can do all sorts of things. You can run a regression line through it. You can do all sorts of stuff, but we're not going to do that today. But we made a, a scatter plot. Now, I'm going to replot the real oil prices of time series, and I'm going to make a little thing for the average. So, I'm, what am I going to plot? I'm going to plot third column, which we made, right, the real oil price. This is the X label, what to put in the X label, and I'm going to say nothing, right, because remember, time series is just a time, right. Y label, the variables usually shows up here, but I'm going to put it as a header. This is line width, and 1 is, I think, maybe the base, but 1 is what you normally see, or close. 2 is a little thicker. You can play around with it. Um, main means the main title on top, and this is real oil prices in WTI. And then AB line is, if you think of coordinates, um, the inner slope and intercept. There's all sorts of things you can do. Here I'm making a horizontal line that is the average of the series, and I'm going to do a couple modifications. C change the color to dark gray, and there's all sorts of colors that are given as words. You can also put those uh, you know, 256 uh, des uh, hexadecimal codes. If you ever see like FF, 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 that's numerical code. LTY is line type. Um, you might need to Google this. Uh, there's, there's six of them, I think. Um, one, they're solid, dashed, and stuff. And, and remember, another thing that I didn't mention is it's always okay to Google, right? If you Google R, LTY, things come up. You know, you're totally welcome to Google and do it. Nobody knows it all themselves. Um, line width 1.5, just from playing around. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to run it. And you can see here's the average. We're not an hour, a little bit below average. So this is the thing over top. No, and, and again, once you have the code and you kind of know what you're doing, the years space themselves nice, the values space nice. This is a fairly nice graph that's very usable in economics. So um, now, uh, that, that's kind of what we're doing for. Now, the reason why we care about this, right, we want to know R, but if I come to you and say, okay, this is great, you had 1980, what would you do if I said, well, I want you to start in 1990, all right? And all you would have to do is you could make another data set and start over, or you could uh, rename data and just say, let's remove the first 12 observations, get rid of 1980, and just start with, um, for, uh, for 1990, it would be 120. 120 observations. You could just delete the first ones. And then you wouldn't have to change anything else and would make all your new graphs and everything, whereas if you're working in Excel, you'd have to completely start over. So there is a fixed cost, right? Um, but there's also uh, a big, low variable cost uh, that you're building. So hopefully this will uh, get you a little started. At, like I said, if you're in the class and you're really interested, um, I really say, like, go through line by line. Really look at it. Maybe play around. Try your own variables. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's okay to Google. It's okay to change stuff. It's okay to borrow code. But it's also okay to make mistakes, right? If you can't run it, you'll learn until you do. So I really do suggest taking the real data, really playing around with it, getting the results, and, and that's that, especially combined with books and tutorials, you'll find that you learn a lot more a lot faster. So I hope you're able to learn from this, and hopefully you'll be able to apply this to class.